Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about a really highly requested topic, which is CSCS program design. So this is a particularly challenging part of the CSCS exam, and we're gonna go over the fundamental underpinnings of program design, like what percent of one rep max do we actually choose, uh, and how we go about that decision making process. And then if you stick around till the end of the video, we'll actually go over an example so you can apply that information to an actual program and see it on paper and see how this works. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to lay the groundwork, we're talking about program design, which is a little bit different than periodization. Periodization is the framework, the overarching principles for what you're choosing in a specific block of training, and that's more big picture organizational. But here we're talking about program design. So we're gonna talk about the actual sets and reps that we're gonna choose and the individual exercise selection that we're gonna make. So a good place to start is with this chart. This chart basically shows you the maximum number of reps that you can do with any percent of one rep max. Now this will vary a little bit from athlete to athlete, but in general, an athlete performing, for example, 80% of one rep max should be able to do about eight reps, give or take one. An athlete performing about 75% of one rep max should be able to do about 10 reps. So it should make sense that if we're looking at a strength and conditioning program and it says to do 12 reps at 75% of one rep max, that should be a red flag that that's probably too heavy of a load for what this athlete can do. So this chart is specifically the most number of reps that an athlete can do at any given percent one rep max. Just because an athlete can do 10 reps at 75% one rep max doesn't mean they should be. Typically they're gonna program fewer than that. And to decide on how many reps an athlete should actually be doing, we actually wanna use a different chart, which is this one, also from the CSCS book. Okay, so I know this can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but let's just go one example at a time here and break this chart down. So first let's start with that top block, strength. Typically an athlete's gonna be doing greater than 85% of one rep max with less than six reps. And this should make sense because based on the last chart, the most number of reps that an athlete could do at 85% one rep max is six. So typically they're gonna do fewer than six reps at less than that 85% one rep max. So for example, they could do a five by five at 80% one rep max or maybe they're doing five by four at 82% one rep max. Again, there's no exact way to decide on that set and rep scheme. There's no exact guideline to tell you that five by five is better than six by four or three by six. It really depends on your periodization scheme and the athlete and whatnot, but this gives you at least those, those windows, that ballpark of where you should be at. Okay, so moving on to power, this one's a little bit more complicated. Now. If we look back to the chart of how much an athlete could do it, for example, 80% one rep max, we know an athlete could do eight reps. But if they did eight reps, their first four would be fairly fast and those next four would be really grinding slow reps. So if we're training for power, we're really just gonna do the fast early four reps of that. So at 80%, they might only do four reps and not do those last four, eight grinding reps that they could do. And the reason for that is that we want to keep the bar speed high and we wanna keep the power of this exercise actually really high. If you wanna, for example, load at 90%, even though an athlete could do four reps, you're really gonna cut that in half and only do about two reps. So as a rule of thumb for assigning load to power, you're only gonna do about half as many reps as you can do, because again, those first reps are the fastest and that's where you're gonna be the most powerful. Using this chart now for hypertrophy program design, you can see there's a pretty big range here, from 67 all the way up to 85% of one rep max, and from six all the way up to 12 reps. So what you can see here is you can actually decide uh, on a pretty good range of rep sets and rep schemes. We could do, for example, just to keep it very simple, we could decide on five sets of eight reps at 75% of one rep max. And again, that's a pretty good idea of about an eight out of 10 intensity level. So why would I decide on that, for example? Well, at 75% of one rep max, you could do 10 reps, but we're only gonna program eight reps because we don't want this athlete to burn out on the first set. So this would be equivalent to about an eight out of 10 intensity level or an eight RPE if you're using that as a scale of intensity. Um, so we typically don't wanna go all the way to the, the maximal um, because again, that, that's taking it to failure. An athlete can't do set after set. They're not gonna recover as quite as well. You're typically gonna go one or two reps below what they could do. So if they can do 10, we're gonna program, for example, eight, maybe nine, maybe seven, depending on the day. 
And this will make a little bit more sense when we go into the lacrosse program example at the end of this video. And then the last example here of muscular endurance, we might be doing something like three sets of 15 at a 60% one rep max. So again, we're loading this fairly low, fairly high volume 15, um, but actually only two to three sets versus having a bunch of sets. So uh, choosing a percent one rep max here, we're gonna be below 67%. If we're gonna go to about 15 reps, we're probably gonna be around that 60% type intensity level. All right, so now let's dive into the fun part when we can actually look at an actual program that I wrote here. So I took this program from my strength conditioning study course and modified it a little bit. So what we're looking at here is a preseason lacrosse program. And we, you can see I laid out sets and reps and percent one rep max loads for these exercises. So let's just go ahead through this. Uh, what you can see we're starting with week one is a trap bar deadlift, but these are specifically speed reps. So this is preseason. this is a strength slash power phase or block of training. Um, so for four reps, we're gonna use 80% of one rep max. If we remember back to that first chart, an athlete could do about eight reps with 80% load, but because we're programming for power and speed, we're only gonna have them do four reps. Uh, I could go higher on the sets, but assuming this is week one, we would wanna progress from three, four, five sets throughout the meso cycle. Um, so what we're just looking at here is week one and two. So this is three sets of four, fairly low volume um, at 80% one rep max. And one other thing that's important to know here is that this is programmed based on A1, B1, B2. What that means is that A1 is done independently. You do that trap bar deadlift, you rest. Do it again, rest, do it again. And once you're done with all three sets, the athlete would move on to the B series. And because it's B1, B2, that's gonna be a super set. The athlete's gonna go back and forth in this case from a plyo push-up to a box jump. And they're gonna work back and forth alternating there before moving on to C1, C2. So if it's C1, C2, again, that's a super set. If it was C1, C2, C3, which we don't see here, um, but if it was, that would be a circuit of three exercises. So that's just a general program design framework that you might see is that, that A1, B1 for supersets and then one, two, three for circuits. Okay. So moving on to the plyo push-up and box jump, we can see that the reps are fairly low here, uh, five to six. This is a plyometric exercise. Um, if we're counting total reps here, it's actually not a ton of plyometric volume, about 15 uh, upper body reps, and then in this case, 18 lower body reps. In the preseason, we do wanna consider that the athlete's probably in sport training as well. So being plyometric exercises, these aren't programmed with a percent one rep max, these are just body weight with a focus on quick speed. Then moving down to C1, C2, we have weighted pull-ups and bench press. Again, this is a super set between these two. Um, we can see here that the weighted pull-ups are six, six, and six plus. That means the athlete's gonna do six reps, six reps, and then the last set, it's an AM rep, as many reps as possible, or you could just say a plus set where they're, the athlete's doing as many reps as they can, um, or a burnout set, whatever you wanna call that. And then for bench press, you can see we're programmed for three sets of five at 75% of one rep max. In this case, we're going for power for these reps. So this is based on the power range of load assignment here. We're at five reps, 75% of one rep max. We could do 10 reps, but again, we're keeping it to five reps to keep these very fast. So you can imagine an athlete, a lacrosse athlete on the bench, actually really pushing these out with a really quick concentric motion. And then moving on to D, we're gonna balance out some of those pressing motions with some bent over row and some lateral lunge. So. Uh, here we're gonna be programmed for two sets of 10. This is not a specific strength and power exercise, but as you can see, we're pretty low into the program. This is really where we're into accessories, so we don't need to worry about exactly being in a strength and power rep range. So really, when we're thinking about programming this block of training or even this actual workout, we're gonna focus the first four to six exercises really with our primary objective, and then some work at the end like bent over rows, lateral lunges, and neck strength can be programmed as just general accessory work in about a 10 to 12 rep range if you want to. And then one thing you wanna think about is week to week progressions, which we're not gonna see a ton of here in just a two week program, but from bench press we can see we're going from three sets of five at 75% one rep max to three sets of four at 78% one rep max. So that's a pretty good example of a trend that we might see continue week three, four, five, where the volume is actually going down a little bit and the intensity or percent one rep max is actually going up. And that would be following a linear periodization model. So you would actually have to see week three and four to actually see that progression scheme play out all the way, but you might see that continue where we're decreasing our volume and we're increasing our intensity as we move towards the season. 
All right, so if you are studying for the CSCS exam, you probably still do have a lot of questions. Program design is a complex topic as well as the rest of the book. So if you wanna learn more, you can check out my strength conditioning study course. It's an in-depth study course for the CSCS exam that goes chapter by chapter through the book. There are in-depth videos for program design for resistance training, program design for sprinting, program design for endurance, as well as in-depth videos of each chapter of the book. This is a comprehensive study resource that is meant to help you master this material and really ace the exam. So if you're a visual learner and you learn well from videos like this and seeing examples and seeing how it relates to athletes, then go ahead and click the link in the description below and you can get more information about it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.